Were LeBron's comments a mistake? First of all, I want to say this. That is a photographic memory. That's phenomenal for him to remember those details with all that's going on in the game or whatever the case may be. That's just, that, that's just special right there because I've been interviewing players for over 25 years, and I'm here to tell you something right now. Most of them can't do that. Not like that. I can, I can assure you of that. So he deserves a lot of credit for that. With, that. with that being said, do I think it was a mistake? Yeah, because I think that Boston is a legitimate bona fide threat. And so I think you have to monitor and couch everything that you say because LeBron can't do it by himself from a literal perspective. Figuratively speaking, his greatness can shine, and as a result, we'll say, LeBron, here he comes to the rescue again. But in a series like this, you're going to need those other parts to step up and handle their business. And when you do anything or say anything this to this Boston crew, these are the kind of dudes being around them throughout these playoffs. These are the kind of dudes that look for every nugget uh, of, of, of motivational tools they can find. This is how they operate. Talk smack to them, get in their face, think that you got them or whatever the case may be, and they're going to come at you. It could be uh, Rosier getting ready to get into a fight. It could be Morris sitting up there putting 3-0, 3-0 in Joel Embiid's face. It could be them talking back and forth to Middleton and the Greek freaking or, or Eric Bledsoe with Rozier and Eric Bledsoe's talking about, hey, you know what, uh, uh, who? Not like he doesn't know who Terry Rozier is, and we see how that panned out for them. These guys are rough riders. They're not scared of anybody. They look for everything to get a bit agitated about, to elevate their level of focus and tenacity, and then they step on the court and use it to their advantage. So in terms of LeBron saying it for himself, no big deal whatsoever, nothing. But he can't play for the other four guys or the other 11 guys on a squad with him, and that's what he has to be careful for in a series like this. I think his comments were not only spot on, but guys, I talk about this sometimes. You know, some coaches and players have a way of not really answering the question that is obnoxious. And the other guys can do the same thing, and it's charming for whatever reason. So I bring up Belichick and Popovich. They can both be evasive or go at reporters, and somehow Popovich makes it a little more charming than Belichick. Or, or a guy like um, Beast Mode can, can, go, can give you non-answer answers, and it's charming, and another player does it, and you go, come on, it's, that's obnoxious. LeBron James is just another wrinkle to his game. This is amazing. He's being asked a why question. Why did these things happen? And he passive aggressively really answers the what question. This is, you know, how it happened, what happened. And he showed off while he did it, but the end result is that I was charmed by it. Like, and even you, Stephen A., you're amazed by it. Like, whoa, what a, the story today, you talk about controlling the narrative, is LeBron has a photographic memory. Oh my God, let's look at that intensity and that, and that attention to detail and the retention. Right, but really what he didn't want to do is talk about why he or others had a bad game. So he merely described the action that took place and made such a show of it that we forgot what the real question was in the first place. That is some next level media handling right there from LeBron. The mental part of his game keeps getting better as he gets older. Yeah, but Max, you, you, you analyzed that perfectly and came to the wrong conclusion. He, he didn't answer the question. He didn't give the reporter. He didn't give the listener. He didn't give any of us the why. He gave us the what. And right. the word that matters here, look at the question at the bottom of our screen. What does that say? Were LeBron James comments a mistake? And the key word is the one in the sentence above that, dismissive. Here's what he should be concerned about. Here's what's a mistake. Yeah, that was dismissive to the reporter. But the other comments that he made, that he's not concerned about game one, that he's not, he has no concerns about what happened here. That's dismissive of the Celtics. And now, so everything you said, Stephen A., I think you're spot on. But not about the play-by-play -play he gave, about saying he's not concerned. Look, he better be that's concerned. That's what I was talking about. All right, that's what you were talking about. Well, that's good because that's exactly what he should be concerned about. These Celtics, as you said, I 100% agree, are rough riders. And who are the Cavs? Who are this, these Cavs? I may have been wrong on the Celtics, but I have not yet been wrong on the Cavs. From the trade deadline forward, I've had debates with you guys. I had it with Pat Beverly. The whole question was, how would these role players, these, these sidekicks, these guys around LeBron James gel? How would this com chemistry come together? And right now, you have to ask yourself a simple question. Is it the way they played against the Raptors or the way they played against the Pacers?
How does game one against the Celtics look? It looks like the Pacers series. And if LeBron James isn't going to be a magician, if he's not going to carry everybody on his shoulders, short and sweet for the Cavs. He better be concerned about not only his game, but everybody else's, the like Celtics, you said, Stephen A. The 